All right, if you click this video, you are trying to figure out how to set static timing on a 13B. This is a Series 5 Turbo 2 13B, obviously, and we're going to set static timing. Forewarning, my crank sensor looks a little different because I'm running a Mega Squirt and I have it modified to run on the Mega Squirt on a single VR sensor, no dual VR sensor. So my crank sensor on the inside is going to look different than yours. On the outside, it's exactly the same. So we're going to need to pay attention to or the front pulley, your timing marks, obviously your crank, crank angle sensor, which is on the bench right now. Here's mine. I can pull this bolt out before I put it in there. Make sure the seal's in good condition. And then uh, this is fairly simple. So let me explain a few things. Okay, so on your eccentric shaft pulley, you're going to have two marks. Now your eccentric shaft pulley can only go on one way. Even though these look equally spaced out, they're not. It'll only go on one way. So these both correspond with your rotor one leading and trailing. Trailing is your top spark plug. Leading is your lower spark plug. That's easy to remember. T for top, L for lower. Now from the factory, the mark on the clockwise, going clockwise on the right hand side is your leading rotor one mark. That's indicated in yellow in the service manual and the one to the left of it, that is your trailing one timing mark. And it's indicated in red in the manual. You'll see on my front pulley in red, I put T and in yellow, I put L. That's just a quick reminder. I also put that on my front cover. So if I'm ever having a stupid moment, I can look at that and go, okay, and the T's on top and the L's on the bottom because trailing is top, leading is lower. So to move on, you're gonna set your eccentric shaft pulley to the leading one mark. And if you want, you can look in to the leading one spark plug hole and you'll see rotor face. So let's move on. Okay, so here's your crank angle sensor. You will find a, or a line and a dot, and you're gonna line those up with your eccentric shaft pulley leading one. And you're gonna slip this down in and mesh it up with the gear. Okay, so clearly the ear where your adjustment is goes down here. You're gonna Carefully insert this in, making sure that stays lined up. And you can pull the cap off and see. Now when you're, there should be another pickup coil up here to pick up. That's pretty much uh, how the engine tells at which firing position it is, whether it's rotor one or rotor two. Mine does that through down here, so I've modified the wheel. So you're gonna watch that. Make sure this doesn't move. You're going to fish it in there. And try to get it in the center of its adjustment. It's going to move some when it meshes with the gear, as you will see. It'll move as it's riding up and down on the gear. It's obviously going to move somewhat. And then as long as your O-ring is lubed, a little push, and it'll go right in. And then you should have a good bit of adjustment. So put it in the center, put your bolt in, and then that is going to be when you want to check your timing with a timing light after it fires up. Uh, some common things, if it fires up and doesn't run, or it sounds really bad, possibly backfiring through the intake, that generally means your timing's off, usually about 180 degrees. Pull it out, check everything again, and then go back in with it. So other than that, this is how you check, uh, how you do the static timing. And you need a timing light for dynamic timing, which I will show you in a later video once I get the engine in and running. Okay, so hopefully this was helpful for you. And if it was, feel free to uh, subscribe. That'd be uh, wonderful. 
So hopefully it helped you. I'm gonna put torque specs and your dynamic timing setting in the video description below. So check that out, make sure your torque bolts right and you're getting the right timing. Modified car is gonna be different. Do as your own discretion. Turbo versus non-turbo, it's all gonna be different. I'm just gonna put specs for this motor in. So that's about it. This is pretty simple and I hope this is able to clarify a lot of things for a lot of different people. I did a video on this years ago, but it was in another dark, dank, dirty garage with uh, bad lighting and a bad camera with even worse uh, sound. So, hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe. Thank you.